it's just hard to be nuanced on the internet, you know? It's, it's really tough. <laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Knits by Mandy. My name is Amanda, and today I'm here to tell you that no, you don't need to buy that. Recently on my TikTok feed, I've seen tons of videos of people de-influencing. And if you're not on TikTok, basically there have been videos of people saying either not to buy products because they're not worth the money, or just commentating on how social media has contributed to rampant consumerism and often encourages us to buy things that we don't necessarily need. Um, and because I'm at the intersection of the knitting community and social media, I thought it might be nice to have a look at some things that we could maybe de-influence on or more mindfully consume in the knitting community. Uh, I will say, I feel like this different is just this idea is a little different because at the end of the day, you do need some things to knit. You need yarn and you need needles, but I think it's much more deep than that. Um, and there's a lot of other things that we can get into. So that's what I'll be talking about in this video. I was inspired by this because I started posting on my Instagram stories today about blocking a sweater. And it's right here below me in my office and I'm using an Ikea bag to like put use as my blocking mat um, and I don't own blocking mats I was kind of just making a joke about it but it got me thinking um, about what else do we think that we need or are pressured to buy either like consciously or subconsciously through social media um, that we maybe could think more deeply about needing or substitute for other things that we have at home. Uh, because I think that there are a lot of different substitutes or different uses of items we already own that can perfectly fit a need in our knitting craft. So with that, I do just have a few disclaimers for this video. The first being that the knitting community is filled with tons of amazing and great small businesses and this video in is by no way like bashing anything that people sell nor am I trying to you know encourage people not to support small businesses but I personally believe that you know supporting small businesses and mindfully consuming aren't mutually exclusive. So I think that we could do both of those things as a community and hopefully this video will, you know, encourage us to do that. The next disclaimer that I have is that some of the things I might mention could be used as accessibility tools for folks in the knitting community. Um, and so I'm not trying to say, make any kind of comment on that. If you need something as an accessibility tool, totally use it. You totally do need it. Um, and I'm, not really trying to, I'm not trying to speak on that at all, actually. So um, those are, it's a huge exception, I think, to this, to this trend or to this video. Um, and with that, let's get started with the video. And the first thing that I have to mention is, isn't actually an item, um, but I think it's an idea that when I first filmed this video, I realized was a thread. So I want to take some time to really talk more about it in my approach to it. Now, how everyone creates is extremely personal and we all have different creative processes. However, if you are trying to focus on maybe consuming things more mindfully and not just knitting things to knit them, one thing that could help with this is not having multiple projects going at once. Um, and when I say multiple, I mean like, five or six or seven or eight or whatever number that starts to feel overwhelming to you. For me, like for you, that could be two projects. For me, it's like three. Um, I feel like overwhelmed by the amount that I have to knit. And I also feel that when you give yourself more time to really get into the project and really get involved with it, you grow a little bit more attached to it and can spend more time thinking mindfully about um, the sizing, the shaping, and things that will ultimately affect the overall wear of the project. Um, you could spend more time thinking about the yarn choice, which I learned this last year is a huge, um, you know, something that really affects whether or not I wear something. Um, so for me, I found that sweet spot to be maybe one big project. And then if I'm feeling 
um, like I need a break, I'll cast on a smaller project. So um, I just finished these fingerless mitts that I'll talk about in my next podcast episode um, after I just finished a sweater. That could be something like that. Um, but I think as in general, if you are having multiple many whips on the needles, you're then needing more yarn and more needles to hold those projects. And I'm not sure if it necessarily lends itself to being super critical about everything that you're bringing into stash and everything that you're making. Um, and again, like I said, everyone's creative project, like processes are different. And I understand that some people feel like really in a groove when they have a few projects going, but I would maybe just be wary of starting too many projects so that you're feeling like creatively bogged and you're not really thoughtfully considering what you're making. So with that being said, the next thing that I have on my list is uh, expensive interchangeable needles. And interchangeable needles really run the price gamut. You can spend up to like $150 on a set, which is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is the thing that you'll use the most in your knitting next to yarn. Um, and you'd, I'd argue you use these even more, these are even more important than yarn because once you knit something, you can't use that yarn, but you're using your needles over and over again. So I say that you don't need a huge set because I have a set of my own. Um, I thought I had it here to show you. I do. I say that you don't need an expensive set because I have a set and I don't use all of it. Like I couldn't tell you the last time I picked out the seven, eight millimeter, millimeter needles and I've had this set for two years now almost. So I don't know what that says. <laughs> um, I think what it does say is that I'm using, I know that I use like from sizes 4.5 to 3.5 millimeters the most. So if you're at the stage where you're thinking about buying a set or you're thinking about buying another set, maybe take a look at the weight of most of your product projects. What is that? Oh, it's getting windy outside. Um, for me, that's four millimeters. So if I were ever to buy more needles, I don't think I would need to buy a whole set. Maybe I just need to buy like a four millimeter set that I can screw on to another cord or something like that. Um, I will say these are cost effective in that they give you so many different permutations of cord lengths and needles um, that I think in the long haul, a set will get you more bang for your buck but maybe look for sets that have a less a smaller number of needles. I know that they're out there um, or start with just a few. Or if you're even not that interested in an interchangeable set, you could get just a few circulars. Um, and I would recommend just getting a circular with a long cable length. And then you could use it for things like sweaters and then also use it for magic loop. Once you learn Magic Loop, your needles become way more useful. And I don't think that's something that I fully understood when I first started. I was usually buying fixed needles with like the, the circumference listed on the pattern, um, but that can like very easily kind of get out of hand and also get kind of confusing. So think about maybe the weight of yarn that you're using in your projects um, and just take a look at what you've made so far and maybe that can help you inform your choice for a needle set. Okay, so this next one is a little controversial and I'm honestly a little nervous to talk about it, but I think it's important to say, and that is that you don't need a huge yarn stash in order to be a knitter. And I'm by no means making a value statement on if you have a big stash or if you have a small stash, um, I don't think anything is right or wrong. I think there's a misconception that you need to have like cubbies full of yarn or your house like brimming with yarn or closets full of yarn so that you can kind of like make anything you want to. And I'm sure that for some people it like really works out creatively for them, um, but it's a hundred percent by no means a need. Uh, personally, and I'm, I'm really only going to try to speak from my personal experience here, um, I try to only bring things into my stash 
as I'm planning to use them. I think I had an exception this year when I went to Rhinebeck, I allowed myself to get one sweater quantity of yarn and in a color that I really liked and was really unique to me. And I got like one thing for an accessory. Um, I personally find, again, speaking from experience, I personally find that when I have yarn that's kind of just like languishing in my house, that stresses me out. All I can think about is like, that's just kind of money sitting on the table, except it's worse than money because it's not liquid. Like I can't turn it back into money. I mean, I can de technically de-stash, um, but that I find that very helpful. So that kind of goes hand in hand with the multiple projects at once. And I will kind of do a like a, a 0.5 on this kind of add to this and say that you don't need a lot of fancy yarn or expensive yarn either. Um, I am someone that likes to buy wool. I like using wool for my items and I like things that aren't scratchy. That is a fact. However, you there are different ways that you can get nice yarn without having to break the bank. Um, some things, and I know it can be there's different levels of accessibility depending on where you live. Um, and I, I know once we kind of talk about international shipping, that can kind of muddy the waters too, depending if there are other knitters in your area. But you can always look for folks that are de-stashing. Um, you can thrift for yarn. That can be kind of touch or go. I'm aware, was just made aware of in my local area, there is a secondhand craft store. Um, if you're in the DMV, it's called Upcycle in Alexandria. I've never been, but I'd like to go. Uh, you can also reclaim wool from sweaters at thrift stores. I know some people have different thoughts about that. Um, the fact of the matter is that we're like swimming in textile waste and most of what is donated at thrift stores gets thrown away and doesn't make it on the shelves anyway. Um, I don't really see a problem with making use of what we have and like what we've already created on this planet. That's just my view and opinion. Um, so those are some ways that you can get your hands on yarn. Um, another great resource is the channel here on YouTube, Wool Needle Hands. Uh, the creator's name is slipping my mind, but she makes really great videos of kind of like budget alternatives to yarn and kind of gives way more insight, I think, than I ever could on yarn. She like buys each of the balls and really talks about the properties of the yarn. So utilize those resources that so many creators put here out on YouTube um, and like know that your knitting is no less valid because you've either made it with acrylic yarn or a craft store yarn, like a big box store yarn. Um, that is completely okay and you don't have to break the bank and use fancy yarn in order to be a knitter. And I feel very strongly about that. Yes, you may see me on this channel talk about knitting for olive or I'm making yarn with magpie yarn fibers. You will see me talking about that, but that is like, it's extremely personal choice. And if I can just hammer home in every video that one, you should have fun with your hobby and two, you don't need to spend a bunch of money or like, fall in to thinking you need everything that everyone else has in order to be a knitter. Whoops, I will have done my job. So that is that is my my thoughts on yarn stashing and yarn. Um again, it's extremely personal and I think one thing that I haven't said yet is that I am just a person trying my best and I like to operate under the assumption that everyone else there is trying their best. So in no way, again, am I trying to like shame people. I, I never want to do that on this channel um, or, you know, make a value judgment on someone based on the yarn that they own. Uh, however, I want to give people freedom to kind of explore whatever they want to explore. So with that, I think we can move on from yarn. Uh, but let's talk next about some accessories to knitting and let's talk about ball winders and swifts. So ball winders and swifts, I'll enter like a video or a picture of me winding yarn so you can see what that's like if you're a beginner and you're not sure. Uh, but let me grab some yarn to kind of give you an example. This might be a little elementary. This might be like a little beginner for some folks here, but hopefully it's helpful. 
This is Iskena Yarn. A lot of indie dyers, most indie dyers, um, and other yarn companies, you can even buy them at like a craft store like this, uh, will have their yarn in a skein like this. When you unfurl it, I'm not gonna do that because I'm not winding this up. When you unfurl it, it's just going to be in a huge loop, which you can't knit from. That would be a mess. So what do you do? You have to wind it up by hand or with a machine. So a ball winder and Swift help you do that a little bit more efficiently, a little more cleanly because things can get tangled pretty quickly, um, especially if you're using like a fingering weight yarn, things can get tangled really easily and like really messy. Um, however, it's not impossible. There are a ton of tutorials on how to hand wind your yarn. Usually a hand wound ball will look like this. I did this when I didn't want to bring out my ball winder in Swift one night. Um, and then also this is what it looks like when you do use it. I received mine as a gift. My brother got me one unprompted, which I was like, that's crazy that you even know what this is. Thank you. Uh, that being said, this is something that you can hand wind yourself. You can either put the yarn on your knees, kind of sit with your knees up and wrap around that way. You can put it around the back of a chair and kind of walk around the chair and do it that way. Um, what I will say is if you have a lot of sweater quantities of yarn, you'll get use out of it for sure. And I think that'd be worth your while. Oh, we have a helicopter going overhead outside. Um, if you have sweater quantities of yarn, you'll get a good use out of it. Um, and it may be exhausting for you to be hand winding like six or five, depending on your size. It could be more than that too. Uh, it could be more, so it could be useful there. I'm not saying it's not useful. I'm just saying you don't need it to knit because you can hand wind. Um, but if you're using like mostly accessories and maybe like one to two skein projects, you could probably hold off from buying one until you feel like you need one. So this one is like this one kind of along with the interchangeable sets is like a wait and see kind of thing. Um, I'm not denying that these things are useful, but they're by no needs like absolute necessities. So I hope I hope I'm just like purveying that nuance correctly. It's just hard to be nuanced on the internet, you know? It's it's really tough. <laughs> so that's why I, I was thinking of making this short form, but I, I was like, no, I need to talk. Like I have so many thoughts. Like we, <laughs> this is not for a reel. I also feel like in general, this is a bit of a tangent, reels in general aren't great purveyors for like dense information. TikTok, maybe. I'm not really making TikToks these days. Um, reels, I feel like whatever gets pushed out to me is like six seconds long. So let's move on to the item that inspired this video. And that is a ball winder. And I already did that. Let's move on to the next thing that inspired this video. And that is blocking mats and pins. So... I already said, I think at the beginning of this video, I was using an Ikea bag to block a sweater. I don't have blocking mats. And I posted this on my Instagram kind of as like a haha -ha joke. Um, and for context, if you're really new, blocking is the process of washing your garment once it's finished. Um, it gives the stitch and yarn a, like a way to relax and kind of make the garment more lived in, kind of bring it to its intended shape. Um, and you can do this when it's wet by kind of shaping it to the specific measurements. I'll put some tutorials in the caption if you're wondering on how to do blocking properly. But here's me saying that you don't need blocking mats and pins. Um, some people responded to me with great alternatives. So um, I like to say that I use either like a reusable bag because it's plastic and not absorbent. And uh, it dries a little bit quicker, I found. Um, or you can use an old yoga mat, just being careful that, I know I have one that has kind of a scent. And so once I used it and my sweater smelled like rubber, uh, but you could use an old yoga mat. Um, you could also use, what else people did say? Some people said towels. You can totally use towels. Um, maybe one tip would be to 
like if you're blocking overnight to switch a towel in the morning so it you know you can kind of get that wet towel out from underneath the sweater and it can still dry in a reasonable time um and also someone said two people said they use cardboard and someone said they use cardboard and thumbtacks um i will advise that sometimes if you're like worried about a pin rusting that's a concern and then you get kind of like rust in your sweater i've only read about this this hasn't happened you can get like t-pins um at joanne's that are rust free and those are much cheaper than buying like a whole set of blocking mats and pins someone also mentioned that they use um like they got play mats basically for kids at uh five below so they got them for five dollars which that's pretty much a deal I'm also very cognizant of these things because I'm someone that just moved out of a studio apartment um, and there was just like no feasible way for me to have all of these things at once. And someone messaged me, they're like, I don't even know where I would keep blocking mats. And I'm like, I feel you. Storage space is paramount. paramount. It's so valuable, especially when you live in a small space like an apartment. Um, that not even factoring in roommates, partners, pets. Stuff just adds up people these next ones go might go a little bit quickly because they're not super in-depth um but they're things that i thought about and you may not even think that you need them but if you do think that you need them i'm here to tell you that you don't first one yarn bowls got it as a gift love it it's adorable it's cute holds yarn it sits in my window it's a lovely little decoration and trinket but you notice how i said decoration you don't need it. Um, if you're using bags to hold your projects, especially, this is just like a less portable, less smaller project bag, and it's more fragile, breakable. At least mine's ceramic. I know some are wood, which would mean they're less breakable. Um, but you don't need this. It is fun to use. It's a little cozy, a little cute, totally like extra bonus item if you want like a cute little bowl. I mean. Who doesn't want a cute bowl? I get it. I get it. But you don't need it. Next thing, and this one kind of like bothers me. Like I would get annoyed when I would see these on like craft stores or someone trying to sell me this. Little pairs of scissors. You don't need a little pair of scissors. I'm almost positive you have scissors. I understand they may be more portable and maybe this is an accessibility thing too, which so maybe you do need them, but I don't need them. <laughs> I use like, I literally will use kitchen shears to snip ends and it hasn't failed me wrong. Just be a little careful. It should be okay. Like you don't need them unless you are traveling a lot and you evaluate your needs and you do need them, then you do. But like on the whole, I don't think you do. The little scissors man. And they're always so intricate and cute and pretty, but it's like, how much stuff do you need? We're getting really philosophical here <laughs> up in It's My Mandy channel. But one more thing that you don't need, project bags. I also was a little inspired by posting this bag that I got in the Target dollar section because someone was like, those can get kind of expensive. Um, and I found, I guess they've sold them before, someone said, I didn't know that, but I found this bag at the dollar section in Target. It was $5 and it has a drawstring closure. That's the only reason why I purchased this because I don't currently really have any tote bags that close like this. So for travel, this could be actually super helpful. That being said, I have used just regular reusable bags and I have not died. It has not killed me and I have not ruined a project. So either using reusable bags that you either take to the grocery store. I know where I live, um, where I live, there is a bag tax at the grocery store and other stores. So we're just kind of in the habit of bringing reusable bags with us. And like every like bank baseball game, you get a reusable bag. I just have so many um, since living here. Um, you could use those, you could, and that's like something that has a dual purpose too, right? Um, you could use like little cosmetic and ditty bags that you have for storage. There's a lot of things that you could use. You could use shoe boxes, whatever works, whatever floats your boat. You don't need to buy 
specific bags for knitting projects. Um, you don't. Okay. So I did a lot of talking and I feel like I was very spirited. Um, but I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate your thoughtful comments below on maybe things that you felt influenced to buy and then you realized you didn't like a lot um, or things that you don't think you necessarily need that you've purchased um, or maybe even some good alternatives to some of the things that I've mentioned. Uh, like I said, I will reiterate this one more time just for posterity's sake. Um, I'm a person doing my best. I like to believe that everyone else is and I'm not here to shame anybody, but I do, if I do anything with this channel, I want to give people the freedom to enjoy this craft, um, to not feel pressured by social media to crank out projects or pressured that you need certain things in order to enjoy this craft fully um, because I don't believe that you do. So this craft and this art has given so much to me and if I can share that with other people I think that is like the biggest goal for me right now um and by maybe having tougher conversations and being a little bit more nuanced being a little bit more critical it's not always super comfortable or fun but I think it can help us grow um so I'm really excited to see your thoughts on this video uh, I hope you all have a good week and I'll be hoping to post a podcast episode on this channel very soon. So thank you so much for taking your time and I'll see y'all later. Bye.